I'm Kat Aniba, and thank you so much for tuning into Holo Holo, your one stop for all things entertainment, lifestyle, and community for our APA audience. Joining us today are very talented, outspoken young ladies who have come together to create a film called Lead a Horse to Water, which they hope will spotlight more APAs and females in the entertainment industry. Here today is Nari An, the writer and producer of the film. We have Akiko Izumitami, <laughs> who is the director and producer of the film, and also lead actress and producer, Junko Oda. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having, <laughs> for having us. <laughs> now, um, tell me, I don't know, who wants to tell me first, maybe Nari, since sure. you wrote it, um, how the idea came about. Well, you know, we all are friends, mm -hmm. and we've been working together um, in Los Angeles in the entertainment community for years. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to put together a project that had Asian American female protagonist mm -hmm. and also told the story from the point of view um, of her life experience. Right. And since Akiko actually loves to do action, let's, we were like, hey, let's do a short action film. And I write horror, sci-fi, fantasy, mm -hmm. and action, so that made a lot of sense. Right. And Junko is actually a uh, equestrian, and she does oh. a mounted <laughs> archery uh -huh. on horseback. Nice. So we put all these things together and right. um, and wrote a short story that uh, combines all those elements. Right. And then um, Junko, tell me a little bit more about the plot and your character in the film. Um, well, basically, um, it's I guess our logline is it's a trust exercise yeah. in a post-apocalyptic world. Uh huh. And um, so Yuma is our main character, mm -hmm. and she is captured along with this. Guy named Marco. She doesn't know who the heck he is, <laughs> but they're captured in this cannibal camp. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The stakes are kind of high. You want to be eaten anytime soon? Yeah. Um, and it just so happens that um, that Marco has possibly uh -huh. seen her brother. Oh wow! And um, the stars align. They're able to escape. Right. And so that's where the story starts. Mm -hmm. You know, is Yuma gonna trust Marco? Yeah. Is he just you know? Right. How, what do you what do you do when you have you know when you live in a cannibal world mm -hmm. and there's nothing left? Exactly. Who, Who can trust? you trust? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, Akiko, I know you're the director of the film. Tell me what your point of view was directing the action film. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I was thinking more like creating the serious action film mm -hmm. that um, people usually don't try with short film, mm -hmm. and it's just because it's kind of dangerous to make right. and it's expensive to make mm -hmm. but uh, I was able to create the fun action film last time uh -huh. with a great team so I saw like oh it'd be kind of fun to try out with female protagonists mm -hmm. and haven't really seen like you know cool I don't know if I can say this words but like kick Yes. <laughs> <Big booty>. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, yeah, so I thought like, yes, oh, it would be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, now I was reading that not only was the story important, but you also wanted to showcase, you know, that females can be strong, can be leading actors without having to be um, sexualized, right, and using guns. Um, tell me a little bit more. I know you were talking about your experience in the film industry. How You said people first see me as a woman and then as Asian and not really as a director. Like, can you s uh, expand a little bit? Well, so every time I go to the film festival uh -huh. and uh, go to the parties and meet all kinds of people, right. and uh, typically I get, oh, you're the actress, right. oh, you're in the film, and which is kind of flattering, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, one time I, our film won the big award, right. and uh, we had a screening at the DGA. And uh, I was talking one of the uh, awarded DP, uh -huh. saying like, "Oh, hi, my name is Akiko, and you know, nice to meet you. I like your film, blah blah blah." And he seems to be kind of like whatever yeah. kind of feeling. But as soon as I say like, "Oh, I'm a director of one of the film we mm -hmm. uh, that mm -hmm. won," and mm -hmm. he suddenly changed his attitude, it's like, "Oh, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I saw the actress," <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> yeah, it's very frustrating. I'm right. glad that you guys are doing this film and sharing this story. Now, Nari, this um, I know it's very important for you to, to share our Asian Pacific American stories. I know you just uh, produced The Unbidden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, That's talk right. about your experience and what it's like now in the entertainment industry. Right. I mean, I've been writing for about eight or nine years here in uh -huh. Los Angeles, and I have representation. I have a literary manager. Right. But even so, the types of stories that I write are 
primarily female protagonists who mm -hmm. are very complicated and multidimensional, maybe right. are not like so um, stereotypically Asian or like right. a heroine or like a good guy. So um, those kinds of stories, especially the fact that I write sci-fi, fantasy, action, and horror, <laughs> is, uh, is makes me on one hand unique right. and something that other people haven't seen before, but on the other hand, exactly. studios would not touch me with a 10-foot pole because <laughs> there are so many um, expectations they have yeah. in the way, which is, can a woman write that? You know, um, can an Asian American think outside of her own ex life experience? Mm -hmm. It's called imagination, people. Yeah, come right? on. <laughs> like, I don't world. think that, like, I don't think that straight white men have the the lockdown on that. Right. You know, when it comes to writing stories. So I'm a storyteller, and mm -hmm. I can tell any story. But right now, the problem is that there's a lot going on in Hollywood mm -hmm. with the exclusion of Asians and Asian right. Americans from Hollywood, period. You know, um, stories where the characters are written as Asian right. and Asian American are recast with yes. white actors. Yes. <laughs> and it's unfortunate that it's happening in 2016. Right, exactly. Now, as an actress, Junko, tell me um, your side and your feelings with all, everything that's going on right now with the whole whitewashing. Right. Um, what well, was interesting when we launched. Um, Lead a Horse to Water, uh -huh. the Kickstarter for it. That's when the news with both Tilda Swinton and Scarlett Just Johansson hit the news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, it, it and I think our project, I mean of course we want to tell a story. We're, right. we're you know, we want to have fun. About, yeah. Um but at the same time there is definitely this like kind of social justice issue because it's not only like entertainment can also is also connected to being political, mm -hmm. socially political in our society. Right. You know, it reflects um how we see and, and of course with Hollywood it is a handful of people who are creating mm -hmm. media for the rest of the country yeah. <laughs> and there's a big big <laughs> yeah. gap yeah. and this past uh, I believe it was um, a Tuesday mm -hmm. uh, Nerds of Color launched uh, their hashtag whitewashed out right. Margaret Cho was part of that too uh -huh. um, and I think I think we clocked in at like the top two most retweeted wow. hashtagged nice. um, topic and even last week there were a lot of other actors writing in about my yellow face story. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. that was. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's perfect timing, especially because May is Asian Pacific American Heritage yeah. Month, right? Yeah, and you know, yeah. Leah Salonga, after her, you know, winning her Tony, yeah, Tony. she still <laughs> couldn't do My Fair Lady. Like, yeah. Hey. <laughs> right? Yeah. No. So it's it's really, um, I think America specifically, because um, Hollywood's in, in yeah. the United States, really needs to realize what America really is. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. that. That's very well said. Now, we can be a part of telling, helping to tell this story, mm -hmm. lead a horse to water. Um, how can we take part in it? You guys have a campaign going on. What do we yes. do? Yeah, we're kind of all over the place right now. <laughs> um, as in, you can find us uh -huh. on Twitter, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And if you go to kickstarter.com and just type in lead a horse to water, you mm -hmm. will hit our page. Right. Um, so we're pretty much kind of crawling all of the social media right now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all we have mm -hmm. to do is go to your Kickstarter starter campaign. Mm -hmm. the, the campaign ends May 31st, yes. so the sooner the better. Please <laughs> go check it out. Be a part of Lead a Horse to Water and help tell our story. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Again, for more information on Lead a Horse to Water and their Kickstarter campaign, which ends May 31st, be sure to head to the website that you see on the screen. We'll be back.